I know some of you are probably saying, but I was enjoying that song. That song is part of my childhood. I grew up on that song. Well, unfortunately, that song is now over. And you're no longer listening to it. Hi, good morning, it's Thursday, and that means that we're broadcasting earlier than usual. This is the Church of Flynn, Thursday, April 25th, 2013. Hi, what's up? I was going to say words right there, and they went, Hey, we're words, we're going to go run away and be someplace else right now. It is wet Thursday, April 25th, 2013, 9.30 in the morning here in Chicago. The sun is just broken through the clouds after an afternoon of cold but dampness, and, uh, I'm going to run that for everything it's worth. So we're going to jump back into day three of Siberia. Well, we're not going to jump in back into day three because we haven't been to day three. We're going to jump back into it for a third day. And hopefully we can make some progress or something this time because unfortunately this game is so slowly paced that it's starting to put me to sleep and I'm the guy playing it. I can't imagine what the audience is thinking about it. They're probably like, did I leave the oven on in another dimension? When we left off, we were at Barakstock, trying to fix a music player for the rectory so that they would give us the money that we need to tow the uh, mechanical train to the winding station so that it will go forward. Now, that's not necessarily the right thing to do anyway, because the locks are closed, so we can't get through that section anyway. But, let's go ahead and load back up where we left off last night. Now, what I was informed, and I was informed this by reading a walkthrough, because otherwise I couldn't have told you that this was going to happen. There is a single item we missed, and it's supposed to trigger, I think it's supposed to trigger, an entire tree of conversations. About wine, about Sauvignon specifically. Hi, phone. What's up? No, oh, email. Or direct message. I want to... Not she. Oh, it's about me. No. Yesterday. Well, that's not very useful. Alright. The key to finding the, 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 the conversation, I think, anyway, is there was another book in the library that we did not take. Because I didn't see it. The uh, hot spotting in this is very, very poorly done. And items are very, very, very easily missed. Pardon me for a second. Yep. Uh, you know, like the the table in the first area or the telescoping key. Um, very, very easy to miss. What we missed, according to everything I've read, was there is another book. And where it is exactly, I don't know. But there's supposed to be a book about something in this section, or upstairs. I don't remember which one it is. But there's another book we can take. Another completely in illegible book, too. It's just tiny and not readable. Run, please. God, I'm double-clicking like a fucking maniac, and it doesn't want to double-click. And now there's somebody on that ladder, too. I wonder who that is. Hello. Shh, don't talk so loud. I'm sorry, but I was wondering if you could help me. Can't you see I'm very busy? No, you're what paying are you looking off a ladder. For? None of your business. Now, if you don't mind, I am trying to concentrate. I haven't got a lot of time left before Professor Pons's next tutorial. Professor Pons, you say? Would you mind working elsewhere, please? Well, I've already talked to Professor Pons, so that's not particularly helpful advice in any way. Alright. One second. At the bottom right corner, there will be another book. Not seeing it, but whatever they say, because that's apparently this this other book is a trigger point of sorts that makes the game go and do stuff. Run! God dang it! If she didn't walk so slowly. I wouldn't be so irritated every time she walks.
Excuse me. <clears throat> Can I disturb you a second? No. You could be a little bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case As we had that conversation yesterday. Ah, oh, there it is. That is incredibly hard to see. Amazon Memoirs of an Expedition. And we open this book. Two. Okay, this tells us that the uh, Amazon Cuckoo, Cuckoo, however one wants to see it, is very big on Sauvignon grapes. Which adds the keyword Sauvignon. Which I like saying because it's a fun French word. Sauvignon, 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 Sauvignon. So much fun to say. Alright, so in we go. Now... Uh, I wonder if Pons knows anything about Sauvignon grapes, because I certainly don't. But that would probably be the deco the thing we need to get rid of the birds out by the ladder to the gangway and by the train. Do excuse me, prof Professor. What is it? Sauvignon. If I were to say Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. They're, they're I found grapes. a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barrackstadt. You did? You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. Okay, so Pawn says. I'll leave you. Sorry? We have to go talk to the station master, who's about eight screens away. Yay for walking. If it wasn't for walking around in these areas, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd be solving puzzles and probably finishing the game. It's like the exact opposite of... of um, where's my pointer? There it is. A uh, legend game where they're overly packed with descriptions and verbosity. and The screens are small in number and usually very densely packed. These things are just wide open and don't... Just the whole... They look great. They never go anywhere. I'm just going to keep repeating that over and over again because it's still the truth. That's the station master. I'm sorry to dis. What can I do? Ask him about the Sauvignon. Where might I find some forest Sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, um, Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. Wait, don't go. You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me. What would possibly give you that idea, April? Er, uh, Kate? I was confusing you with the protagonist from the much better Longest Journey.
Well, he didn't run off any place I can find him. So I guess he's out of the game. Well, he didn't run over there anymore. right here excuse me stay can't you see I am uh, no well, well, well I am very busy indeed but uh, okay okay I, I think I can give you a minute of my time I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry you don't know where I could find some look lady the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries not even for Sauvignon funny you should mention it that's exactly what I was looking for Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberry, the red currants, they're, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Baruchstadt University Avery itself. Well, if it's in a book, then... Don't believe everything you read, miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. How should I know where to find your stupid grape? Go ask your professor, what's his name, Pons, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. I won't disturb you. Welcome to Bar. All right, so the station manager dicks me around for a while. Good morning, Nublet. How you doing? Kicks me around for a little bit, and then says, go back and talk to the guy who told you to talk to me in the first place. That's awesome. I'm on a fetch quest where I'm not even fetching anything. It's more like a wretch quest. Do excuse me, Professor. What is it you want to know, miss? You wouldn't know where the forest Sauvignon plants are kept in Bauerstadt, would you? Uh, why do you think there are Sauvignon plants here? I read about it in a book at the library. Uh, try going to see the station master. If such a shrub exists, he will have a better idea than anyone. It's actually he who sent me to you. I thought it a little strange, but he definitely said, ask the paleontologist. You're the only one here, aren't you? Yes. You're the only one here yes, at all. indeed. What a strange way to behave. Well, I, um, I think he must have made a mistake. That's all. Nobody tells me anything here. Maybe you should ask the rectors. After all, they are in charge of the university. All right. Thanks. Uh, I'll leave you. So, so he sends me to the rectors. Heaven knows I wasn't doing anything else. Slowly walk up the steps. Ever so slowly. Sorry, game's gonna pause for a second. There we go. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself. 
And they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. So tell me about your Sauvignon, or Sauvignon. Are you sure there are no Amazon Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt? Because I have just interviewed the station master and the paleontologist, and what they said really didn't convince me that there wasn't any here. We are quite definite on this point. There are no Sauvignon plants growing in Barockstadt. You see, miss, the Amazon forest Sauvignon is a rare shrub that requires very special conditions for growth. That's right. Uh, conditions that are very hard to reproduce, believe you me. Difficult, but not impossible. Uh, fortunately, our garden has proved very successful. Your garden? So, there is a garden in Barakstadt? Oh, the garden. Well, if there was one, it would be only a little garden hidden behind the station. But our station master would be very proud of it. He would take very good care of it, too. Everything would grow marvelously if we were able to cultivate it at all, and it would be all down to his gardening prowess. And we would be proud as punch. And we wouldn't forget the role the paleontologist might play in this. What's the paleontologist got to do with it all? Without him and without his laboratory, how would we make the wine, do you think? And it would be good wine indeed, my dear colleagues, would it not? Oh, yes, a delightful balm to soothe away our long hours of toil and our heavy responsibilities. We would wait impatiently every year for the arrival of the year's produce. So, if I have understood you correctly, there are indeed Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt. They are cultivated in a garden behind the station, then turned into wine by the paleontologist's loving care. And finally, the pleasure of tasting is yours. If I'm not very much mistaken, gentlemen, you have a minor racket operating here. Miss, you do go jumping to some hasty conclusions. We never said that. That's not what we said at all. Uh, uh, we, we were talking in the conditional. You know, with ifs and woulds. So, what would happen if I had such a hunch? Hmm, you would have to keep it to yourself, of course. Yes, if, if you would be so kind as to keep it a secret. <laughs> it would only be a small local concern, producing barely a few bottles every year. That's right, nothing so grandiose as a business. Otherwise, we'd be liable to be fined. So, we can't count on your discretion, can't we? Don't worry, I have no intention at all of getting messed up in anything. Okay, so there's a garden, we are, a train station, right, thank you. and thank that I need to figure my way out, too. Man, so much talking. Blather, 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 bother, bother. Alright, so let's go see if Pons has anything different to say now that we've exposed his scam. Do excuse me, Professor. <sighs> Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, miss? All right, tell me where the Savignon is. I have just had a very interesting little discussion with the rectors. It seems that you are perfectly aware of the existence of Sauvignon plants here in Barakstadt. Apparently, you find them very tasty. Not at all. I never drink wine. I prefer to make it. Production to me is much more satisfying. So you don't deny? Why, uh, seeing as the rectors have let you into our little secret, I even converted part of the laboratory into a fermenting room for Amazon Sauvignon wine production. <laughs> of course, I cannot produce wine in large quantities. We have to be discreet, uh, after all. And what about your students? Haven't they noticed anything? Oh, you know how students are. 
After all, a chemical reaction is still a chemical reaction, even when grapes are involved. And malolactic fermentation takes time. Sometimes strange odors begin to waft through the corridors. Then I just burn a little sulfur. Incredible. Totally incredible. You are really something, Professor Pons. Really something. When we mm. figure out what it is... I'm not sure whether I should take that as a compliment. Neither am I. I'll leave you in... Sorry? Also, a fantastic job at not telling people about this thing by going around and talking to everybody and finding out about it from them. Yes, could you tell me the information about the garden that the rectors told me doesn't exist? Sorry, she's not real keen up on this secrecy thing, but then again, most of your game heroines aren't. I'd like to talk to you about... thing. Over here, Kate. Excuse me. Can't you see? I'm fine. You have been playing with me, haven't you? You knew very well there were forest sauvignon berries in the station garden. No, not at all. I've never seen your Sauvignon things. You don't have to lie to me. I know all about it. You and the rectors are in cahoots, and the professor's lab has been turned into a distillery. You've all got a nice little smuggling racket on the side. Smuggling racket? Hey, hey lady, you're going a bit far there. It's just a little on-the-side thing we got going. That's all. It's just for ourselves. Hey, you're honest. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Aren't you worried about the reputation of this fine university? The authorities should be informed of this. But we haven't done anything wrong. It's not a crime. Can you open the gate to the garden, please? Oh, sure, sure. No problemo. Right away, miss. Jesus, you are such a killjoy. Like, seriously, hella. They're just making wine for themselves, and you're like, I'm gonna call down the fuzz, motherfuckers! 401 uh, 505050 where did I get 41 from There you are please feel free to visit the garden at your leisure and uh, uh, there was just one thing. Uh, I'm not a liar. Not really. Just mum's the word. There is a reputation in the university to think about. And I have superiors. And I have to do what I can. I understand. Don't you worry. Ah, uh, thank you, miss. Why did you walk back this way? Go the other way. All right, into the garden. We gotta get back to the garden. I'm singing a hippie song. I doubt anybody who's actually watching my cast. Now. Nature of my life, really. that for the time. All that work was so we could get a handful of Sauvignon berries. Grapes. Really? Because that's what you make Sauvignon out of is grapes. Pardon me if I just sort of go, they're grapes, and then the music swells. I don't know why the music swells so often. It's not, there's no point. And yet there it is. Swelling. It's 
like excessively using the uh, Bond theme in a couple of Bond games. Every time you did something cool, it was like da 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 da, ba da ba da. Didn't I? Did it not save the... I didn't click outside the game, game. Did it not save the sound settings? No, it did. The music's just really, really loud. Okay. Now we'll use the Sauvignon grapes. Now they're grapes, not berries. So they're distracted. And I can go up the ladder now. I can buy Papa John's pizza. Okay, so what do we got here? This is the mechanical eagle the station manager was talking about that's broken. Impossible to reach it. How is it impossible to reach it? It's right in front of you, honey. Don't use the hook on it. Impossible to she won't. Impossible. What is so impossible to reach it about that? I mean, that's Honest Engine and the Get Fresh Twins. What the fuck is your problem? Why would you not just grab it? I'm gonna guess that I need a rope or something, but I haven't seen a rope anywhere. Not that I can remember anyway, but with the way the hotspots in this game are so freaking tiny, I might have missed it. I don't need that. Okay, then why is it still a hot spot? Ugh, game. Seriously, you're just driving me nuts.
Okay, so apparently I did the wrong thing. That's the European school of design I've found in adventure games a lot of the time, unless they're English. Excuse me, British. I do differentiate British, English, or English, Scottish, and, well, I suppose Irish and Welsh. I've never played a Welsh game that I can think of. I've played Irish games. Welsh, though. I don't think I'd know if I did. Unless you use the phrase boy or a lot of consonants. What I was apparently supposed to discern from one of Pons' conversations. Is that I need to take the mammoth. Which I'm sure is fragile and doesn't react very well to the oils of my skin. So of course I'm going to handle it as often as possible. And show it to him to demonstrate that Hans is that the uh, the thing Hans swore about blah 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 actually does exist. Miss, miss, please, uh, excuse me. Yes? You know, I want to apologize for our little misunderstanding. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a bottle of wine. Marekstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. Come on, move a little faster. Oh, this game needs a speed option. Okay, so we have a bottle of wine now, which we can only get once we've got the mammoth, which is, again, another pick up one item somewhere and it triggers another event. This game does a lot of that. A lot. It's, it's you know. to go to Pons, or Hans, or Franz, or lemon-scented Dons, and give him, or show him, the mammoth blush. Do excuse me, prof Professor. Professor, I have brought you something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans doll, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh my god, it's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your Hans and my Varlberg heir are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. 
You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. No? Do you think so? Obviously. Give me your telephone number and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. Well, seeing as the train won't move without it... And that opened up the laboratory. Hey, he's got one of the voice cylinders. I wonder if it's anything good. Look at this desk, or this lab station. Oh, what do we got? Uh, a bottle of something. A pair of calipers. It's probably going to call grips or something. Test tube holder. Oh, okay, that'll work. A wine bottle. Yangala cola power? Powder? Oh, that's the stuff that gives you the amazingly good sight. Yeah. <clears throat> X-ray vision or some such junk. The one of the books talked about it. What is it you want to know, miss? My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. Ornithology is far from being my favorite. Are there? Mm -hmm. The Amer. I'm Thank you very. Okay, he's got nothing. Particular. What would you say about seeing Hans Varlberg again? After all, you could come with me and help me find him. <laughs> Young lady, you are very kind. <laughs> I'm far too old for such escapades. Well, such is life. You told me earlier about a lecture on some ancient Siberian tribe called the Ooks or something? Yukals. The Yukals, my dear. Careful not to confuse them with the Ukistran people of Central Asia. Do excuse me. I wanted to know if your lecture is going to start soon. Your eagerness to learn delights me, my dear. But I haven't finished studying this marvelous mammoth effigy yet. Don't worry, I will call you. See you later. I'll leave you. Sorry? Alright, so that's all of that. I'm assuming... That the test tube holder can be used to pull the egg out of the uh, nest up top. I'm hoping that's the case anyway, otherwise it's another case of, well, I have no fucking idea what's going on. And to everybody and anybody who's here with us this morning, hi, thanks for coming in. Hi, again, Twitch is not giving me a viewer list, so I have no idea who's on. So I'm just going to say hello to you all in one lump group. That includes those of you who were not with us on Tuesday, on Thursday morning. It's a shame you couldn't be with us live, but I understand life is life. And some people actually do work in the mornings, you know? That's a thing.
You fell off this gangway, my friend? You are seriously a klutz, Mr. Station Manager. With all due respect. Alright, so now I have the... egg. Why I needed a 3-inch test tube holder to get that rather than, you know... Well, not 3 inches, but it's not very... Test tube holders aren't very long. Why that made all the difference in the world, I'll never know. I don't know why I ran here. It's not going to save me any time. Because I have to walk from this screen to this screen. Watch her slowly walk down the stairs. Backwards. Go to this screen, still end up on the stairs. I can think of for the egg is the uh, bandstand, which I've been tasked with fixing. Take the egg, which probably weighs more than the other egg. Okay, balances it out. The wheel and stand opens. Go down into the mechanics. And apparently, I have found a Dalek. Exterminate with me, Ozek. Okay, that fixes the bandstand, which means the rectors will now give me the prize. And I might actually almost be done with this area. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little... They are kept to... No, our tra... Could I pass out of the question? Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. Perform the task we agreed on quickly, and we will pay you on completion. A deal is a deal. Gentlemen, 
I have managed to repair your university bandstand. Hoot, hoot. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about it. <clears throat> we agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train. All right, so I have the money. Apparently they gave me $100 and in And while quarters. we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. All right, so there here we, go. we are, busy chat chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, Miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Okie dokie. So now we can give them the money, which introduces one other problem. The locks are still closed. And I still have to walk 50,000 fucking miles to get back to the train. Sorry, uh, trying to negotiate something on my phone while playing the game at the same time. No, I'm not playing Angry Birds. Of course, somebody thinks that. Terrible game. Ugh. Not a good game. Okay, I don't think that was what you intended to link to, guys. Alright, let's give the money to the guy. There you go. Here's your money. I've checked it. It's all there. Ah, thank you. Not difficult to get dollar. See? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. We please to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma vor vat pensi no sesto, declina madam. No se sa ye mar ales non comprendo en alora caput en andere mordel. Zir zvar moa. On boom telefonieren caput caput. My husband say instructions complicated. No understand manual. My husband angry. Very angry. Oh, now telephone broke. Kaput. Now that is annoying. What are you going to do next? We wait repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. 
Take key. Seller always need key for lock. You're lucky I saw where that went. Okay, thanks. Otherwise, I'd be here all year. So I think that is like one pixel. Alright, so we now have the lock key, which kind of makes sense if you stop and think about it. That brief moment of steam overlaying. And a phone call. Hello? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I saw this fantastic fur coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your must, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far, especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little. <laughs> I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin. All right, so a completely pointless con conversation with my mother. That's great. Thanks, Mom. Good to know that you're as useless as ever. And then we go over to the walking station. Which we can actually work now, I think. Because we have the key, so we'll put the key in there. The instructions are written in a language I don't recognize. The instructions. Okay, so does anybody know how to work this? The inst I can't read it.
I'm sorry to dis- What can I- I feel like I've lost- Hey, anything? I've just been to see the Rectors. Uh, I thought they'd say that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm... But it's... The locomotive's engine might not work. It's a possibility. Uh, nothing. Can you explain to me how the locks in the canal work, please? A lock, right, is this system of sealed gates. They're clever, right? They help boats overcome gradient problems in channeled water flows. <sighs> they make this kind of boat staircase, see? You know what I like? Sitting on the bank, watching the barges and... I'm sorry. I must have expressed myself badly. I need to know how the <laughs> locks open and close to vary the water levels. I'm not sure on the precise maneuver. Trains and barges, barges, trains. Now, those guys are very different fellows altogether. All right, so you have no idea how that thing works, do you? Great. This is what I need. Another case of, hey, go figure this thing out. I think there's five zones to get through before we can get to Siberium. This is only the second. hemp before this is through. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say hello, young lady! Is it the locks that are stopping you from carrying on your journey? Da, barge no pass. Lock closed. Have you tried, like, just opening them? Nay, not possible. Have tried. Now system kaput. Oh, dear. I am sorry about that. Looks like we're all being held prisoners in Barrackstadt then, in a way. Funny that, isn't it? Well, that wasn't very Is helpful. It the I have no. oh. We would save a lot of time if you came with me to work out how the lock system works. Schlechte Idee! Alone, wenn ich nix in Jammerfeld war, tut Bordelle kaputt das Machina. Don't you agree? We already accept a favor. If you want more, you pay more. That's out of the question. Too bad. I'm just going to have to work it out without your help. Awesome. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Dos vidania. So I've got to figure out how these locks work, but I don't see how because they're in a language I don't speak and the buttons don't actually seem to do anything. In case of problems, contact the following number. Then probleme, then problem of Glende Numer Telefon in 276-6742. Of course, it's not going to stay up. Oh, it's right there. Remarkably, I have a mobile.
Welcome to the East Block Control Center. To start, press the number sign. If you are using the Holtenberg lock, press 1. If you are using the Morloff lock, press 2. If you are using the Conning Pass lock, press 3. If you are using the Barrackstadt lock, press 4. To return to the last command, press the number sign. If you want to raise the water level, press 1. If you want to lower the water level, press 2. To return to the last command, press the number sign. You want to lower the water level in the Barrackstadt lock? Yes. To confirm your choice, press star. Oh, to return yeah. to the previous command, press operator, the number operator. sign. Operator! Operator! Your request has been logged. Unfortunately, our regional technician is currently on holiday, and no replacement is available. We will reply to your request within 48 hours. In case of an emergency, please operate the lock system manually. We apologize for delays to our service. Wait, what? Oh, good. I'm not 100% sure how I was supposed to figure out that was that's how that worked, but that's how that worked. That was a leap of logic that made my teeth hurt. work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. God verdomme! Das ist eine echte Ladies. Alle etwa, range alle Dingen und oblig alles die Dame. Ach, set content und zurück again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up! We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay? Okay. So now the boat is by the train. That's the most awesomest thing that's happened since the last awesome thing that happened. I don't know what awesome thing that was, but in this game, awesome is a very small quantity. It's a very rare quality. It's made of chocolate cheesecake. But in bites smaller than your thumbnail. So, where in the world are they? Where did the train go, or the boat go?
has an entire fucking tugboat. There you are. Oh, you need me to adjust the locks. Down there. You looked fine in the cutscene, and now you're like, oh yeah, we're not fine. Not fine at all. Alright, so now you're over there, I'm guessing. I swear if they make this thing much more complicated, it's a bit like pulling teeth through my nostrils. With a sandwich. Now they're over there. Awesome. Hey there. Da. It must be really neat to travel by river. Oh, schlecht the boot. I never forget that that's grund. For me, local loco is fantastic. And a kleine road mit Ustet. Okay. You guide. <laughs> Excuse me? My husband say he like his barge and he not like your train. Too noisy. If you want to travel in Tin Can, you stay in Tin Can. Sure. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, Loco Coco Mitchen. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Oh, catch it, sir. Good throw, don't you know? Uh, I have a sneaky suspicion the chain is still over here. Oh, yep, there it is. If that's going to work. It looks like something's missing. Put a hook on it. I'm sure that's not ornamental and that's structurally sound enough to pull the whole damn train by. So you tugged it down there, and now you expect me to do that. <sighs> Cutscene, could you not have done it for me? And phone call. Probably my boss screaming. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukos at any moment. 
please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. So the train is just about ready to go, and we need to go the other way and see his lecture. We need to see his lecture. You can't skip it. It's a plot point. Our scripting point, so... Just about time to leave, and no, we're staying for a cutscene. Probably a lot of talking about mammoths. You know, the mammoths I haven't given a green fuck about. Ow, that hurt. Sorry to keep stuttering and going silent and such. It's just, you know, part of the, the windowing system that I'm using to actually make this work doesn't like not having focus because, well, it's an old DirectX game. Are you go in the door or are you just going to stand there like a twit? I see stand there like a twit seems to be the, uh, the high choice. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. Looks like the joint's jumping, Professor. There's almost two people. And then suddenly, like, six appear when the camera turns. All right. Time to listen. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukols date back to the last ice age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, 
skins, fat and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yukal forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukal existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes, as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yuko's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukal Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian Ice Ark is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live, or how they survive. 
Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Oh, good. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. Oh yeah, I just realized. That's why we have to listen to the, go through this lecture. Also a very short lecture, I must admit. Um, because we have to get the mammoth doll back from him or the train won't run. We can't get the mammoth doll back from him until we've sat through that whole conversation. All of it. Endlessly. All right, just a second. <clears throat> get back to the right place. Get back to the right game. And go. Also, sorry for about half of that lecture session being my steam wallpaper. All right, I have been given an ultimatum. We are going to have to cut her off at about noon today. Uh, I have errands to run for my housemates. Things that need to get done, food that needs to get bought, you know, that sort of thing. So, we're going to go for about another hour here, and then we will wind her on down. Maybe come back tonight, depending on how tired I am after uh, my programming courses this evening. Which may be considerably tired. Uh, we will not likely be casting this weekend, because, well, as much as I would love to... Uh, I have projects. I'm moving into finals week here very, very, very soon. Oh, I need to go back in there. I need to go to the lab. I get the mammoth. I forgot entirely. Okay, seriously. Professor, it's me. I've come to pick up the mammoth doll. The doll is waiting for you there, Miss Walker. Please take good care of it. Don't worry. I'm beginning to get quite attached to it myself. Can I trouble you just a little longer? With pleasure, Kate. I'm all ears. Um, I'd just like the, the doll back at this point. I'll leave you- Sorry? So that gives us the mammoth doll back. Shirt. Jeez.
All right, I think we are actually maybe gonna get out of Botox stack. Finally, it's only taken three hours. Dragging my attention over to my mobile phone. Look at me, look at me, I'm awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep telling yourself that, friendo, and maybe one day it'll be real. Sorry, it keeps doing that. I can't make it stop. I can't go that way. And there it is. There's the platform of not sucking. You'd think you could generate a self-winding drain or something. Oh good, it retracts itself. Unlike the one at Valdelan. Oh, phone call. Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? Mess. If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes? Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on the subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back 
Call me back when you've calmed down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Jeez. Well, thank you for getting back at him. I was wondering if you ever would. Or if you were just going to be like a wallflowery type. It's good to know you have a spine of some sort. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Then, let's go. Speaking of mechanical problems, there aren't any other hitches I should know about, Oscar? This train has no mechanical problems, Kate Walker. Winding the spring mechanism is standard service procedure. Okay, okay, Oscar. Don't get all touchy about it. I didn't mean it like that. That's it, Oscar. We can go. Kate Walker, I must remind you of one of the journey regulations. All objects featured in the train's inventory must be replaced before departure. I don't understand. Something is missing, Kate Walker. Oh my god! The mammoth doll! Please return it to its allocated position, Kate Walker. I'm off I Yes. You're extremely off, but we love you anyway. And I also have this new voice cylinder I can play. Hans, I have some very sad news. Our father is dead. He passed away peacefully last Sunday in his sleep. I feel so lonely now. Father had been but a shadow of himself since your departure. I had to take care of everything for him. Housework, factory paperwork, the workforce, clients, everything. And now, today, well, I really don't know who or what I'm fighting for. Times are so hard, and this terrible war is destroying everything. War rages on. Nobody cares for our automatons anymore. I just think about you returning. And when you do return, I will have turned this factory into a palace worthy of your genius. Please take care of yourself. I love you so much, Anna. February 1942. Hmm. So, her father died in 42 at the peak of the of World War II. <clears throat> Particularly if you were in France, it was a bad time to be in the Alps. Well, bad time to be in France in general. As far as the factory's still standing, all things considered. World War II was hard on France, very hard on France. Alright, now can we go, Oscar? Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay. Off we go into the wild something something. Forward we go. When till we stop? That's a train, it's running along its track. Now where it goes, nobody's told me. And into a wall we go at high speed. It'll leave me crushed like a bread splatter indeed. And, well, I don't know. But there's words that I'm using. It's kind of amusing. Did we actually just go forward like 10 feet and then stop? Yep, we went forward like 10 feet and stopped. All inspiring Seriously. Oh, great. That's gone. I forgot that. Sorry, arguing with something that doesn't want to work.
I apologize for constantly buggering the fucker duck. What are you doing there, Oscar? It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations, Kate Walker. Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. Oscar, don't you think we've wasted enough time already? You neglected to find the clockwork winding mechanism for the train with sufficient haste, Kate Walker. What nerve! And you refuse to lend a helping hand. Help that could have been invaluable to me. I agree, Kate Walker. If you weren't so obsessed by procedure, we wouldn't have had a hitch. I am not entirely convinced, Kate Walker. Oscar, please, let's get in the train and leave, can we? Yes, Kate Walker. Give me the visa. <laughs> wow, he's a twit. I don't suppose you can help me get this visa, then? Your non-supposition is correct, Kate Walker. Okay, see you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. Alright, so someone has a visa. I need to get a visa. They only accept Amex. Fuck! I wonder how that works. It probably doesn't. Excuse me. Let me guess. Oscar's on the other side, standing at another office, going, Yes, I have visas right here. Would you like one? They're made of chocolate. No, actually, I probably have to run all the way back to the front. I get an exit visa from the station master. This game is so clumsy. Visa? I'm sorry to disturb what I feel like I've lost my hey. I fixed my train but the walls still in my way I can't go anywhere this whole situation is totally ridiculous totally ridiculous yes it's what I said please miss you're scaring the birds there is a gate in the wall isn't there the gate is locked do you know if the rectors have a key to it a key a key <laughs> it would take quite a key to open a gate like that Anyway, the wall belongs to the army. That's their business. Because of the enemy, you see. The enemy? What enemy? Don't ever go to the other side of the wall, miss. That would be crazy. Please, believe me. Nobody ever goes there. Ever. Okay, this line's broken. Train and the station made to go together after all, miss. But I mean, I thought it frightened your birds. 
go figure. Reckon I gave him a little entertainment after all. I won't disturb. Welcome to. Hey, kid. Hello. Hey, baby. You Just who do you... Hey! <laughs> hey, listen. Let's see if the rectory knows anything otherwise. Sigh. Gentlemen, I'm awfully bothered to have to disturb you again. Hmm. A bothersome disturbance indeed. Which, I may add, disturbingly bothers us. No bother, my dear. We're listening. All right. I finally managed to get my train out of the station. Everything may return to normal. I hope you're happy. Yes, we are now very satisfied, and we thank you, miss, for respecting our regulations. A train should first stop, then subsequently leave to leave space for other trains. There we go. One more little problem we've managed to tie up, and now we can return to some highbrow concerns. Like penises. I want to express my gratitude. Thanks to you, I can carry on my journey. We would also like to thank you for repairing our bandstand. It was beyond all hope. Allow us to wish you good luck. And see you next year at enrollment time, perhaps. I doubt it. But thanks anyway. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. Well, so Here you guys are, are useless. Right, and so where am I supposed to get this visa? Because nobody here even seems to want to talk about it. So utterly endlessly frustrating, and it's making me wander around in this.
I'm so sorry. Oh. Sometimes you just gotta, you know? Okay, gotta be something more down here than I thought. Doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> annoying, annoying, annoying shit. I mean that, then that's in the nicest way I can think of. Annoying shit. Nothing here. She can look at the wall, but that's about as far as that goes. <clears throat> Oscar, can't you please forget about procedure just for once? Your request is refused, Kate Walker. Do you realize, my good man, that as a lawyer charged with an important matter of inheritance, I could sue you for obstructing justice? Kate Walker, we still need an exit visa, in any case. Uh... So where am I supposed to get it? Oscar, don't you think we've wasted enough time already? You neglected to find the clockwork winding mechanism for the train with sufficient haste, Kate Walker. What nerve! And you refuse to lend a helping hand. Help that could have been invaluable to me. I agree, Kate Walker. If you weren't so obsessed by procedure, we wouldn't have had a hitch. I am not entirely convinced, Kate Walker. Oscar, please, let's get in the train and leave, can we? Yes, Kate Walker. Give me the visa. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's a path. That's a fucking path. No point. All right, so now we're in the wall. All in all, it's just another puzzle in the wall. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, and my phone is going to ring again. Watch, it's my boss this time. Hello? Kate! Oh, is that you? What's going it's on? Olivia. Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it. It's huge. I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's do, and he said you'd argue. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down-in-the-dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down-in-the-dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead, and his eyes mist up, and his eyebrows kind of creased together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, 
I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. Really this slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. It's just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. It's a good thing to know that she gets great cellular reception in the middle of fucking Europe. On an American cell phone. No point. The no point it's locked or I don't need to go down there generally means nothing's ever going to happen. It's the legendary Silent Hill. The door is jammed, or the lock is broken and can't be opened. Look, broken glasses. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. I haven't got time to have a drink right now. I haven't got time to have a... Then why even offer me the option? I haven't got... Okay, I get it. You haven't got a time to have a drink right now. Who is the captain and what am I supposed to have talked to him? Did he hang out with Tennille? Again, with the stuff that you can't see, but you have to, I guess. I keep having to resort to images and shit because I can't see what the hell I'm supposed to be seeing, and there, there's almost no hotspotting. There's a guy right there. I walked right past him. I couldn't see him. Good day to you, sir. Captain Melatesta, Commander in Chief of the Barikstad Border Post, at your service, madam. I need a visa. My name is Kate Walker. I've been assigned by my company to find a man who was supposed to be living in Siberia. What a peculiar mission. Taking so many risks for such a futile goal. Captain, to my mind, the military zeal with which you insist on guarding this meaningless wall strikes me as equally futile. I should be offended by your words, miss. But I forgive you, because you are young and unaware of the very real dangers lurking in store for us. What kind of dangers are you talking about? I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? Because I it's say... It's far too dangerous. 
in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. Whoa, three I've been observing points. them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. I, I have. You're, you're an idiot. Is the person who takes care of the gate anywhere around? There is no person who takes care of the gate. Believe you me, ma'am. I have been the one and only guardian of this gate since 1968. Man, you that year, right. I took over the position from the late Sprite, Lieutenant right. Colonel Malatesta, my own father. In that case, can you tell me how the mechanism works? It sure looks complicated to me. Not at all. It is child's play for anyone who takes the time to work out its surprisingly straightforward logic. And from the looks of your locomotive, it shouldn't pose you any problems. Why do you say that? When I caught sight of your formidable locomotive, I immediately said, Heavens, only Hans Vorlberg could design such an engine. And I know what I'm talking about, ma'am, because he invented the gate's original mechanism. It was his last creation here in Barkstadt. So you know Hans Vorlberg? No, I mean, not personally. I was only a baby when he stayed in Barkstadt. My father spoke often of him. And I knew about his inventions. He left very many things behind him. I know. In any case, I noticed that his fantastic knack for inventing has not deteriorated with age. How's he doing? I don't know. In fact, I don't actually know him. I'm searching for him. An inheritance matter. I hope his train is going to lead me to him. And why not? His inventions are always full of surprises. Between the station aviary and this bleak wall, the change in atmosphere is radical, don't you think? It's been a long time since I've been at liberty to judge, miss. My duties forbid me from abandoning my post. All right, well... Don't mind me. Please, Matt. You're blind as fucking fuck. Because I've used your teller scrop. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. It's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have a really bad eyesight. Well, then let's make his life a little more easy. Spike is wine. And we're going to pour some drinks. And then I'm going to suggest he has a drink. On me. Colonel, sir. Captain, miss. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody need know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, flirty bitch. Just a drop. You walk like, I don't know, the great dictator. Bring your nose down, sir. It's going to make your neck. Here's hurt. your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, miss. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, it tastes like mushrooms. 
Mm. It's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barrickstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. I the do. university authorities kept that one to themselves. Yeah, really you good know, job, Captain, uh, Mom's the word. It warden. is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree. Nothing but a dead tree. Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There I'll is just no have to more kill danger. you. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. Authorization to cross the wall. I'm not going to read this because... Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. I can't shut them, I don't Miss, have animations for it. If we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? Sure. We have my promise, down Captain. Monitors. All right, so he's done. Whew, talk, 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 do one thing, talk, 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 do one thing. Talk, 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 talk. I'd like to have my mouse pointer back, please. Oh, hey, I lost mouse pointer. Um, that's bad. I've actually lost mouse. Oh, that's ungood. Because I can't save if I can't get to the mouse, which means we have to repeat everything we did today. Everything. Oh, that's ungood. There's no shortcut to save or anything. You have to go to the items menu and it's not recognizing my mouse. Fuck a buck. It's refusing to even take focus. Oh, shnikes. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> we just finished this area. We have to do it again. All of it. Every step. Because the mouse is dead. Okay, that was a screenshot. I don't know what the hell it did that for.
Okay, you can stop doing that. Okay, well, you're just gonna keep doing that. Yep, no keyboard shortcuts. You will save via by, via menu. Oh boy. Yeah, we're we're fucked. It has to all be done again. Because there's no way to get the mouse pointer back. It's got focus, it just will not acknowledge the mouse. Well, um yay. Uh thanks for Thanks for tuning in, folks. Um, it's pretty buggered at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a cast. Thanks for tuning in, whether you're with us live or in the archives, wherever you may be. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Uh, been a pleasure working with you today, and uh, I'll see if I can't get back to this position before we go back live. We may be live again tonight. Again, like I said, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be playing Siberia, though. We'll play something. We'll figure it out if we come back. Otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow. And as I always close out the cast... May whatever you put your faith and hope into bring you the best of all possible tomorrows. May the you and those you hold dear never want, never need, never suffer. And until I see you again, I look forward to seeing you again. Peace, love, security. Have a good day.